Hi there, my name is Eric, and this is Spot Metering with your digital camera, part two. Okay, so the first method that we talked about was direct spot metering for, a determ for determining exposure. So the idea here then is that where the spot meter meters from, that's the central part of your focusing screen, if it happens to fall into the middle gray shade region, that's red circle one on the picture there, uh, you can take the photograph of it normally. In other words, spot meter, uh, put the center spot on that gray area, take your picture, everything should come out fine. If the central part of your gray scene, of your scene is not middle gray, then you have to meter off a different part. So let's say, for example, that uh, number one didn't work there, but number two is a perfect gray spot. So then what you would do is you put your central spot on that point and then push exposure lock and reframe for your picture. Now you could also uh, change it to manual and uh, set the shutter speed at the point that was noticed. The second way of doing this is if you have a known exposure value of, of some point in the picture. A good example of that for me is shooting sunsets. This is something I do all the time. I pick a, a place left or right of the sun and spot meter off it in aperture priority. Okay, So if you notice on the picture, I've got a little cir circle there showing where you would meter off of. You would pay attention to the resulting shutter speed. This is important. You've got to remember the shutter speed. Okay, so then I turn to manual mode and I reduce the shutter speed by one full stop, which is generally three clicks uh, of the command dial. Okay, then I reframe and take the picture and your sunset will always come out with nice vivid colors. Uh, works every time. Now, a variation on this is something called the hand method. And I used this for years and years and years when I was shooting film because it was a good way to estimate an exposure. Okay, so the palm of your hand is about two thirds of a stop lighter than middle gray. Uh, some, someone's, your palm might be lighter or darker than this, but mine's about two thirds of a stop. It tends to be the standard. This is important. Okay, so your hand has to be in the same lighting situation as your subject, otherwise your exposure is going to be off. So in aperture priority, spot meter off the, your palm and remember the shutter speed. Set your mode to manual and dial in the shutter speed two thirds of a stop, that's two clicks, slower than the given setting. Take the picture. And the third way now involves something called the zone system. So the zone system was originally developed by Ansel Adams as a way to perfect the exposure developing and, exp and uh, printing of film. There are different variations on this. Uh, this is my own twist on it over stuff that I've learned over the years. So this system represents uh, a useful method for working with JPEGs. You can expand this to work with RAW files by adding a, generally a stop to either side. The principal idea is that objects reflect various amounts of light and uh, we can place those objects, those, those different shades, uh, on a scale from light to dark with the center representing middle gray. Objects will fall in place for various zones based upon how much light they reflect. Bright values are right of center and dark values are left. Now, this is important. Take a look at this shot. It was color. I converted it to black and white for this uh, example. Notice again that the, on the um, number line to the right that my zero value there is middle gray. You've got values going plus one, plus two, and plus three. Those are approximate stops. And minus one, minus two, minus three, also approximate stops. So this represents a total of seven stops values. JPEGs typically have about eight stops of value. And if you were to actually do this, you would discover that there's a half stop either side between uh, minus three and plus three. Um, so you can see that I've got uh, a number of different uh, things here. This is very light. This is plus three. Okay. Down here is very dark. This is minus three. Uh, and these all uh, correspond to various different points. So for example, this plus two over here, if we drag this across, you can see that this is the same shade. Okay. And this plus one value here, if we drag it across, it's, it's approximately equal to this. And so the idea here with the zone system is to move around and meter off various different areas. Now, because you have a spot meter, you don't have to get close. You can do it from a distance. Uh, and what I would do is I would, uh, I even zoom in on, in some of these situations uh, if my lens allows me to. 
uh, so I can get a little closer to it and I can meter off of it and I pay attention to my shutter speed and I look at the various different areas, the light areas, the dark areas, and I pay attention to shutter speed. And in my mind, I'm placing them in those various different zones. And as I do this, I'm starting to understand what a scene is going to look like if I pick this shutter speed or that shutter speed. So how do you use the zone system? Set your camera to spot and aperture priority and make sure exposure compensation is turned off. Examine the scene you are about to shoot and move the camera so as to read the reflective light coming off any particular area. This is done paying attention to shutter speed. Bright areas will give faster readings and darker areas will give slower readings. Imagine which zone each area falls in. A bright area may be two or three stops faster than a middle gray zone, opposite for dark values. As you move about, you should develop an appreciation for which shutter speed will do the best job. Select one and take a shot. Now, this is the nice thing about digital cameras, is that you can play your photograph and display a histogram of it. Okay, and then you go, oh, I, I, my shutter speed was too high, or my shutter speed was too slow. Uh, make the necessary change, take another picture, and do yourself a favor. Think about what is going on with uh, the shutter speed that you picked and the way those different zones turned out. And that will really help you understand what's going on with the zone system. So spot metering is just one way uh, of getting a correct exposure. Consider that there are many different ways to obtain a good exposure. So I use spot metering sometimes, not all the times. I use evaluative metering quite frequently, but it's not my only tool in the chest. Do not rely on any one method, but rather have several techniques available. Paying attention to details using evaluative type meter readings in conjunction with spot meter techniques, and this will allow you to improve your ability to get a correct exposure. Raw images have better latitudes than JPEGs, so consider your shooting in raw. Uh, and a histogram is an empirical way, basically that means that it's, it's, a, it's a scientific way, uh, to validate exposure decisions. Use them, so use histograms to verify uh, or reject choices that you made. Okay, thanks so much for watching this. My name is Eric. Have a good day.